Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 15th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide you with an analysis of NASA's global temperature monitor, particularly focusing in on July of 2018. And what NASA GISS has found is that July of 2018 was the third hottest on record following 2016, which was the first hottest, and 2017, which was the second hottest July on record. Now it's worth noting that the difference separating between July of 2016, 2017, and 2018 is a minuscule 0.04 excuse me, 0 0.04 degrees Celsius. So not much difference. And it's also worth noting that July is the hottest month in the global measure due primarily to warming of land surfaces in the Northern Hemisphere, which, which puts July at the top of the, the global temperature curve. So we, we've just experienced a, a very hot period globally in July, a, a period that was not st statistically or significantly statistically different from the hottest July on record. So if you are feeling like you just experienced a very hot month, then you're not alone. We, we've seen numerous global temperature records fall across land masses throughout the Northern Hemisphere in July. So overall, this above average reading is about one degree Celsius above 1880s averages. And that puts us squarely in the range of the 1.0 to 1.2 degrees Celsius above 1880s range that we have seen in recent years. And this range is, is getting us into a, a region of, of global temperature that, that we are completely unfamiliar with as human beings and as a human civilization. And any significant, actually any warming that we see beyond this range that, that, that we are presently in, it's my opinion that we're going to feel it. So, so each 0.1 degree Celsius of additional warming it is going to feel pretty intense for, for us as a global civilization. So, so something to think about, the, the Earth is presently warming at a rate of about 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade. So, so we're, we're, we're getting into a range here where where, where impacts are going to start hitting hitting harder. I mean, we're already seeing some impacts now that are hitting relative each 0.1 C above where we are now. I think it is is going to to see some some significant impacts. So so serious motivation to really start cutting those carbon emissions, really start working to transition to clean energy, and really start learning how to to draw carbon down. From the atmosphere because because we're we're at the cusp of, of worsening impacts. So enough said on that point. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and provide a an analysis of, of the spatial temperature anomalies for July. It appears that July was cooler than usual in the higher latitudes of the northern hemisphere. This due to a persistent stormy environment for the high Arctic, in which we had persistent cloudy conditions and a storm ranging over the high Arctic. Now note that the Arctic edge zones, particularly in, in Scandinavia and in Western Russia, were much warmer than normal. And we saw some very severe impacts in places like Sweden and, and parts of Scandinavia due to wildfires, particularly burning above the Arctic Circle as a result of these much warmer than normal temperatures. It's also worth noting that July was a very hot month for Europe and we can see this 
in the global temperature spatial anomaly map provided by NOAA, I'm sorry, provided by NASA. It's also worth noting that the U.S. West Coast comes up, and we've seen some very severe wildfires uh, sparking in July, particularly in California. And this spatial anomaly map is, is showing much warmer than normal temperatures over this region. In the southern hemisphere, we see some typical polar amplification signals for Antarctica during July, which is southern hemisphere winter. And throughout the equatorial and lower latitude regions, warmer than normal temperatures. From a zonal perspective, southern hemisphere temperatures saw the highest anomalies in the 67 degrees south latitude range at about 2.3 degrees Celsius above average for the entire latitudinal zone, with northern hemisphere excursions in the mid latitudes particularly significant. Uh, 41 degree north, north, north latitude departure of 1.37 degrees Celsius above normal which is indicative of the extreme heating that we have seen in Europe and parts of Asia and parts of North America in particular over the past month. It's also worth noting that the cool pool south of Greenland is a continuous feature and that the tropical convergence zone in the Atlantic has been cooler than normal, which, which may tend to tamp down, tamp down hurricane development for this season. We're going to have to see about that. It's also worth noting that the trough zone does come up in the eastern and central U.S. with cooler conditions than surrounding areas, but that these conditions were not cooler than normal, just cooler than, than surrounding regions. It's also worth noting that temperatures in the equatorial Pacific are warming up as we start to shift away from a La Nina pattern to, to a pattern that appears to be favoring El Nino. So for the coming months, as we look forward, it, NOAA is predicting that it's more and more likely that we are going to see an El Nino type event emerge in the equatorial Pacific. And I'm gonna look at some of these indicators for El Nino. So, so NOAA is indicating a 70% chance of, of El Nino occurring during Northern Hemisphere winter. And El Nino is a, is a natural variability driver of increasing temperatures, so, so a short-term variability driver. But with El Nino emerging or predicted to emerge, what we might tend to see is that temperatures start to ramp up in the August through December timeframe. And what this may do is tend to push 2018 temperatures a bit higher. Now we've been tracking a, a bit lower so far than 2017, but June, July, August, it looks like it's going to be about the same as 2017 with the potential actually for, for us hitting slightly above or slightly below 2017 range and we're going to have to look at the September, October, November time frame because if El Nino does start to emerge we might also start to challenge 2017 in the 2018 range. Overall we're looking at between 1 and 1.1 degrees Celsius above 1880s for 2018 which is which is in the range of, of the top three hottest years on record. So a general overview of the NASA report, spatial anomalies and potential trends for returning to challenges to previous record heat in the coming months. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.